All right, quick little warm up today. Uh, you want to pause the video and see if you can't recall how to solve some equations here. This one happens to be an inequality. We're going to work on some equations, how to write them, and just some vocab that rarely gets used, but when it does, uh, it kind of makes sense. All right, so go ahead and pause, solve this one out. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to subtract 4, so I get negative 2x is less than 18. We're going to divide that by negative 2. So this one had a couple different ideas mixed in here. I'm dividing by a negative while solving with an inequality. So now remember that guy needs to flip. So we're going to be greater than negative 9. We'll drop a 0 in here. We know that negative 9 is to the left. Yeah, I counted them. Okay, so negative 9. Next thing to remember is this thing does not have an equals to, so it cannot be the actual point. And uh, we want to be greater than negative 9. So what's greater than negative 9? Well, that's the positive number, so I'm going to shade off to the right. So that's a nice little review getting into those. All right, an equation is a mathematical sentence that uses an equal sign, right? So be very careful about using the word equation versus an expression. An equation with one or more variables is called Dun, dun, dun. Open. Okay, because we don't really know what's going on yet. That's why we solve it. All equations can be classified as true, false, or that open because we don't know what it is just yet. So we're going to classify the next set here. Uh, so if we add these together, we're the whole way up to 42. And this one is a little more obvious that it is 42. So this one happens to be true. All right, 8 times 7, 7 times 8, that's 56, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, and that's 54. This is not true, so it's false because those are not equal. And C, this one happens to be open, right? Because we have a variable. So there's really not anything else that we have to do with it. Can we do something with it? We sure can. We could add 14. We could divide that by 2. But we're going to save that for later on. And if I, now we want to identify the solutions to the equation. So if x is 6, this is what we just did. So I feel pretty confident that you guys are going to be okay. So is the solution to the equation 6? Well, let's solve it. Subtract 12 and subtract 12. So 2x equals dun, 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 20 divided by 2 divided by 2. x turns out to be 10. So is x equals 6 a solution? No. No, no, that can't be. You know why? Because it's 10. That's why. All right, other option is I want to take that 6 and plug it in like we were going to. So 32, 2 times 6 plus 12. So that's 12 plus 12. That's 24. And is 24 equal to 32? No. Okay. So it would be false. Or it's not a solution. All right, and the next one is 1 half a solution. Right. So remember, we can work with this both ways. They're asking very specifically, so what's half of 6? That's 3. What's 3 minus 8? Well, that's negative 5. And is negative 5 equal to negative 5? Yes. So yes, it is. Right. Remember, the other option is to solve the equation and see if you can get 1 half for x. Right. So it works both ways. Sometimes they call that uh, you know, plugging and chugging if we work backwards or using the solution. All right, next one. This might seem really, really, really basic, um, but it seems to be a huge problem for kids as they get started with algebra. Uh, we want to write an equation. An art student wants to make a model of the Mayan Greek ball court in Chechen Itza, Mexico. The length of the court is 2.4 times the width. Okay, so this is called a comparison sentence. This is the most important thing in here, okay? Doesn't matter if you want to head to Mexico and check it out. Uh, if you want to Google this, do have a couple pictures on the side. It is kind of neat. But we're looking for this comparison sentence. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the very end. And I'm going to circle whatever's on the end. Right? So we're talking about length and width. What's on the end is width. So automatically right now, things I know is the width equals x. And then the length is going to be 2.4 times that, 2.4 times x. All right, a student is making a model of the court that has a length of 54 inches. What should the width of the model be? All right, so we just want to set it up so it's 54 equals 2.4x 
and then we're going to be solving for x, which is just the width. So we're going to divide by 2.4, and x turns out to be 22.5 inches. Okay, so where did that come from? We want the length to be 54 inches. So the length has to be equal to 54 inches. So we can solve that and find out that the width, right, plain old x, is going to be 22.5. That gives us a nice proportion. And sometimes, uh, maybe before, you did solve it by proportion. Um, so here is another picture of the great ball court. It kind of looked, I don't know how it's played. I'll be honest. All right. Give the integer values between. So this is using an estimation. Usually in high school, we get away from some estimation, but we throw just a couple problems in here. Um, so as we work on those, and it's more about, do you remember how to use a table? So what would you guess? So how close do you want to get here? So I might say, well, if I know 9 times 4 is 36, so let's try negative 4, because I want to change the signs. So negative, times, negative 9 times negative 4 minus 5 equals 28, question mark. So it's 36 minus 5 is 28. Well, 36 minus 5 is 31, so we're pretty close, right? So that gave me 31. But what if I try negative 3 then? Negative 9, negative 3, minus 5 equals 28, question mark. So that's 27 minus 5 equals 28, question mark. That's 22. So negative 3 gave me 22. So where does 28 fall? It falls in between those two, right? So that means I want to be in between negative 3 and negative 4. Negative 3 and negative 4. Okay. By all means, I know you guys can solve these, but this is also using that vocabulary, talking about integer values. What must it be between? So if we try that one more time, uh, we can say, well, well, what do you want to guess? What do you want to guess? Right, you guys are pretty smart. Let's get pretty close to it. So let's try 8. Okay, so x, y, let's plug in 8. 3 times 8 minus 3. What's it equal? 3 times 8. Well, you're going to be 24 minus 3 is 21. All right, that was a pretty good guess, right? What about 3 times 9 minus 3? That's 27 minus 3 is 24. So 9 gave us 24 which is in between where we want to be. But keep in mind, my answer is about between what integers. So 8 and 9 are the integers we want to be between. Okay, so not too bad. Not too bad. All right, quick review of what in the world we were talking about so far today. Is negative 9 a solution? All right, well, remember we can plug it in or we can solve it. So let's plug it in, negative 9 plus 1 equals 8. Well, that's negative 8. That's not equal to 8. So this is a no or a false type of question. My favorite is we're looking for that comparison. You can read 1.5 pages for every page your friend can read. Okay, so who's on the end? Your friend. Okay, so your friend is x. And that means you, you must be 1.5x. All right, so we're talking about pages that you can read. So this is going to be a translation that we want n equals 1.5p. Okay. So read the number of pages that you can read, well, you can read p pages, your friend can read n pages. So this often happens a little bit in translation. All right, quick little recap. You want to add into your notes. Write a true equation, right? A false equation and an open equation. Okay. After that, we do want to solve one more. Remember, if it's plus 4, we're going to subtract 4. So x equals 9. And that's how we're going to solve it. All right. Are you thinking about what rule was that? If you thought additive inverse, that's awesome. Hey, great job, and we'll check in in class.